I know, I know. You turn to me for answers, for clear positions, no equivocating, no waffling. Not today, boys and girls, not today. We're talking Syria, the latest outrages in that war-ravaged country, and what, if anything, we're supposed to do about it, to change it or to stop it or to show we don't approve or to show we don't back down or, or... There's trepidation in the land, and more than that, there's uncertainty. For instance, we want Assad to lose, but do we want al-Qaeda to win? Those seem to be the current choices. For instance, maybe the two Johns should have a sit-down and sort things out. Here's John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, who questions whether attacking Syria has anything to do with America's strategic interests. Whatever the President does, especially if he doesn't come to Congress first, will be too much for John Boehner. And here's John McCain, the former Navy pilot, who's never met a crisis that he didn't think would be improved by putting American planes in the air and maybe some American bombs on the ground. Whatever the President does won't be enough for John McCain. But it's not just Republicans in disarray. There are plenty of Democrats, too. They're less likely to take to the talk shows to call the president a warmonger or a wimp, but they're not sure either. They're remembering Iraq and a false road to war. And you have to wonder if we'd be this close to another war if it weren't for the videos. 100,000 Syrians had already been killed, not by nerve gas, but still, before we ever saw those awful videos. But can you look away? Can you do nothing once you've seen them? Well, India's doing nothing. Brazil is doing nothing. Russia and China, of course, are doing nothing. Even Great Britain. Great Britain, who's been Lindsey Graham to our McCain, our comrade in arms, our wingman, ready to follow us into any adventure, no matter how ill-advised. Great Britain says they'll sit this one out. They also remember Iraq. So we may be going it alone to stand up for international norms, we say. But not just that, we say, to protect our credibility. And so you have to wonder if we'd be in this position if the president had never uttered the words red line. Sorry, no easy answers today.